October 23rd, Pastor and, uh, Tim and Pastor Tyler will be taking the church van to Indianapolis to visit former uh, pastor, uh, Reverend Stan Nickel. Anybody who wants to go to that, uh, they're going to leave about 10 a.m. and return around 5 o'clock. So we had a couple of people wanting to make announcements. Angie's one of them. Angie has an announcement. Okay. Um, good morning and welcome to Kimberlin Creek. A um, couple of things in your bulletin, you will see our updated list for Operation Christmas Child necessities. Um, I need all of those things by November the 8th because that's the night we are going to be packing boxes. Um, and remember that November the 4th, we are having a craft fair. And for the kids that weren't here, we have a special announcement is we are going to have a um, fun Friday night on November the 3rd from 6 to 9 for Kingdom Kids to come out and have a good time. All right. So we have uh, more announcements. And Mick, two weeks from today? Two weeks from today. Yes. And you had an announcement too. <laughs> the recipe. That sounds good. I wish we had that for a light lunch today. It sounds good. <laughs> Meeting after church for the combat fish fry. Also, we'll be having our annual veterans breakfast on Saturday, November the 11th from 8 to 10. If you know any veterans, please be sure to invite them uh, to come in for this free meal. The 412 youth will be preparing it for them. All right, Pastor, it's your turn. I've made a mess of things. It's your turn to straighten it up. <laughs> Good morning. Good to see you all this morning as we come into the house of the Lord and we come to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As uh, already uh, mentioned in the announcements, let me uh, add to it. Um, this, not Monday, but a week from Monday the 23rd, uh, myself and Pastor Tyler will be taking the church van and going up to Indianapolis, more precisely up to Sionsville on the northwest, upper northwest side. Uh, to see uh, Pastor Stan Nickel and his wife Betty, and we would love to have many of you come with us. We can get 15 in the van, so we have 13 to go. Well, oh, oh excuse me, uh, we have uh, 12 to go. Judy has already told me she is planning on coming. So, oh, all right, sister. Sister Beulah is coming also, so that takes us to 11 to go. I can't do math in my head. I have to stop and think. I'm sorry. So please come and uh, uh, speak to me. We need to have a good handle on how many is going to make sure we've got space for everybody. Uh, as we come into a time of prayer, uh, praying for many this morning, praying for the family of Melvin Allen, for uh, you, many of you saw the prayer text that went out this morning for Aggie Couch, that is uh, Jeff Riley's mother, and they had to take her to the hospital this morning for uh, chest pains, and that's where he and Angie are today. Praying for Kim Kennedy Hopkins, for Rick Romero, for the family of Jim, uh, is that Jim Welling or Jan Welling? I'm sorry. Jim. Jim, okay. Um, praying for Brian Hubbard. Praying for Sis Floyd, for David Wells, for Janet Wells, for Jessica Craig, uh, for Ronnie Bonnie with skin cancer uh, removed. For praying for our world situation. Um, a especially focused upon Israel. I looked at a news item this morning. It apparently went out last night. I did not see any news last night, but there is a second um, uh, uh, aircraft carrier group going to the Mediterranean from the United States Navy, the USS Eisenhower. Praying for the family of Rebecca Bearvelt. Praying for Ann Jensen, for Macy Payton. And remember Deacon Stephen, who is not with us this morning. He is preaching in another congregation today. Other prayer concerns? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
under the water. Praying for Katie Peacock. Others? And there's many missing this morning. We pray they'll be back with us next Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. And praying for Pastor Tyler and Leah as they're on vacation and for, um, um, for yeah, those people. Jay and uh, Dana is there on vacation as well. Yeah, I, I, I get up here and I just, just forget everything. I'm equal opportunity. Other prayer concerns? All right. Praises. I am, oh, before we leave prayers, and let us continue to pray for our missionaries in the Sunga and Kihomi. If you advance to the next slide for me, please. And uh, for them and for their ministry in the Dominican Republic, and yes, they might be slipping back across the border to Haiti from time to time as well, but uh, principally with Haitians in the Dominican Republic for that ministry. Okay. Uh, prayer concerns. I'm excited to tell you that I got on Facebook this morning to see if I could find an update. Uh, Reverend Debbie Kelsey, uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church, Utica, uh, New York. Uh, the group that is there in Israel, and she reported about 9.40 this morning that their plane landed in New York City. Amen. They are back in the United States. Praise God. Amen. So we are very excited for them indeed. Still many there. Many there indeed. Uh, pray, uh, uh, Danny and Mary Basham are doing better. Brian Barger doing well. Carly Gross feeling better. Sean Sands getting a new job. Praise God for these and many more. Other praises this morning. We've got to have a praise or two. Sister, oh, uh, sister, I know I can count on you. Yes, ma'am. You're so bashful. Amen. And I'm sorry I was talking to her about the same time your hand went up. That, that's fine. No, we had a room full of um, kids for children for um, Sunday school this morning, and there's always room for more. Always, always room, room for, more. for more. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. We didn't have a big turnout for the hay ride, but it was really nice. The weather was, it was fine. The weather was perfect, wasn't it? It was really nice coming. It was very cold nature. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lawrence, for, for, for driving everybody around. Yes. Yes, ma'am. The handsome men. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just come this morning in confidence and excitement as we approach your throne of grace and just praise you and thank you for how you bless us day in and day out. You alone are worthy of our praise, and we just come pouring it upon you this day. May your praise rain out of our lives all over you, Lord. You are so good to us. Thank you, Father, Lord. Lord, as we come here this morning, we come in anticipation of worshiping you this day. May we truly give you the praise and the honor that you so richly deserve. Everything that we say, everything that we do this morning, may we point others only to you. You are the center of all that happens this day. You are the one being worshipped. We just pray, Lord, for our life together as your people, as we seek to be your church, your hands and feet that you have planted here for such a time as this, as we seek to grow, go out into our community and share your love with all people, and as we share our love with our community this afternoon, as we 
go out for our road cleanup, and we just pray for many who will be staying today and help with this process. Many hands make for light work indeed, and we just thank you, Lord. Father, we come with many concerns upon our hearts as we pray for Deacon Stephen, for Ronnie Bonnie, for the world situation, for the Bearvelt family, for Ann, for Macy, for Katie, as we pray for Jessica and Janet, David and Sis and Brandon, as we pray for the Welling family, for the Allen family, for Rick, for Kim, for Aggie, each of these, Lord, in their time of need, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, praying for your healing touch, praying for our missionaries, Nasunga and Kihomi, especially today, Lord, as you anoint them with your spirit and power and presence this day and every day as they seek to share your good news across the Dominican Republic. We just pray, Lord, for all of these in their time of need, and we just pray that you will show us how we can reach out to these and be part of your conduit of blessings upon their lives. Thank you, Lord. We just pray all this in your Son's name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, brother. Ronnie Bowman. Okay. That makes more sense. Well, it says Bonnie here, but thank you. <laughs> Praise God. He knows who we're talking about. Amen. 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 I was that before I said it, but I thought I'd let you know. <laughs> Ronnie Bowman. Ronnie Bowman. Ronnie Bowman. Ronnie Bowman. If you all are able to stand this morning, um, get up and um, <laughs> Oh, 
thank you, God, this morning for a beautiful day. It may be chilly and we may be a little cold, but God, we just thank you for the glorious day you've given us. God, that we thank you for the many things that you do that we forget to say thank you for. God, we thank you for just who you are in our lives. And God, that when we forget you and we forget to take you to work with us or to Walmart with us, God, that you're still there. God, that you heard the many prayer concerns this morning. And God, that we just pray that you will do a work that only you can do to do a healing in, in the bodies and in their minds and in their spirits. And God, that just help them, God, in a way that only you can. God, that we praise you for the glorious things you give us. And God, that may we return a portion of what you give us in this offering this morning. And may it be for your glory. God, we thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us turn our Bibles this morning to the first book of the Bible, Genesis in chapter 9. Genesis in chapter 9. As we ask today, do you see the rainbow? Genesis 9, and we'll begin with the 8th verse. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Rainbows. I tell you, there is nothing that seems to get people more excited. When there is a, a time where the rain ends and the rainbow comes out into the sky, you can just see cars parked along the road, can't you? As everybody gets out like, ooh, what is that? 
This is a picture that I took here at the church building. I had somebody saying, I think I recognize that parking lot. Yep, this is right here. Looking to the east. And if you'll look real closely, it's hard to see it. But up above the rainbow, there was another rainbow. There was a double rainbow going on. And it was so pretty. When I was getting ready for the sermon, I went looking through the pictures. I said, I know I've got a picture of a rainbow in there somewhere. And I had this one image from when we were in Ohio. And I was shocked and surprised. I forgot all about this one. I took this picture back in May of 2020. Hmm. I wonder if anything was going on back in 2020 of May. That was the time I needed to see a rainbow. Amen? We get odd. We get excited. It feels like being a little child again. Ooh. As we get to see that rainbow with our own eyes. You know, there are lots of misconceptions and misconstruals of what rainbows are. There are those who use in our society that it has nothing to do with the biblical understanding of a rainbow. I remember when I was growing up, folks saying that the rainbow was a promise of no rain, it, or no more rain. It happened at the end of the rain. Okay, poof, that's what it was. And that's not what the rainbow means at all. Look this morning at verse 15 as we read, God saying, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. It is a reminder, it is a symbol that there will be no more total destruction by water. No worldwide floods will occur again. But we must remember that we need rain, we need water. As all the um, uh, farmers here this morning say amen, right? As the old saying goes, it truly rains on the just and the unjust. Where does that proverb come from? Where is that saying from? It is not a proverb of a saying. It is actually a promise from our Lord Jesus Christ himself that we read in Matthew chapter 5. You have heard that it was said... You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Now, when we were... Uh, having the uh, soup supper and hayride the other night, we were praying that it wouldn't rain. And yesterday, you know what? It started raining. And I kept thinking about this trash pickup today, and I was like, okay, Lord, please don't let it rain, don't let it rain, don't let it rain, don't let it rain. And according to the forecast, it's not going to, praise God. But we need to remember that we need rain. And that it is a good thing indeed. The, remo the rainbow reminds us of all this and so much more. This morning, let us look at the rainbow and see what it does symbolize. First, the rainbow is a symbol of trust. Who do we trust when the storms of life come our way? Do we trust the weatherman or do we trust our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Well, I checked out what the weatherman had to say, but I was praying to Jesus that it would not rain. Where do we run for help in the difficult days of our lives? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. We are to turn to our Lord himself in our times of struggle, in our times of the storms of life. It's not a deal of when, if the storms come, it's when they come. We will have storms in life. That's part of the human predicament. It's who we turn to during those storms that make all the difference indeed. I've heard it said so many times that God will not give us any more than we can handle. 
No, 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 no. Quit using that phrase. It's not in the Bible. In reality, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. We will be tempted, but he is there for us in those times of struggle. In reality, God frequently gives us far more than we can handle so that we will learn to trust in him. He, the rainbow is a reminder of that symbol of trust that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. The rainbow is a symbol of faithfulness. The rainbow, it is a reminder that God keeps his promises. He is not looking for a, uh, well, that's interesting. I just love to see you know, my little typos, and I'm just like, what in the world did I try to type right there? He is not looking for a way out. Okay, <clears throat> I made two words, one word. He is, not, he is not looking for a way out, but he keeps them with joy in our lives. God keeps his promises. I heard about a lady uh, who, whose husband, all his life, every time he got paid, would take $20 out of his paycheck and put it under his mattress. Well, he got sick and he was about to die. And as he lay there dying, he said to his wife, I want you to promise me one thing. Promise what, dear? I want you to promise me that when I'm dead, you will take my money from under the mattress and put it in my casket so that I can take it all with me. Well, he died, and his wife kept her promise. She went in, got all that money the day he died, and went to the bank and deposited it, and wrote out a check and put it in his casket. <laughs> Pam, don't get no ideas. <laughs> I'm not talking about these kind of promises, okay, amen? God is faithful. And when we read the Bible, Scripture is chock full of the promises of God. And unlike this situation, God keeps his promises. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy, same chapter 31 and verse 8, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. The Great Commission that we read uh, last week, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. God promises He will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we see the rainbow in the sky, we can get excited because we know the one to trust in and we know the one who will never leave us hanging dry or hanging in the rain, I should say. The rainbow is a symbol of tr trust. The rainbow is a symbol of faithfulness. And praise God, the rainbow is a symbol of a provision in our lives. Now, we got to be careful about what we make promises about, promises that we truly can carry out in life. Uh, after an evening out, some parents returned home to their children, whom they had left with the babysitter, and they were pleasantly surprised after they had been out all evening to find that their kids were fast asleep. When the sitter had been paid and she was getting ready to leave, she communicated one last tiny detail to the parents. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot to tell you, I promised Sam Sammy that he, if he would stay in bed that you would get him a pony in the morning. 
Well, we're not talking about those kind of provisions, are we? We're talking about these kind of provisions. Thank you, brother. Bring it on up here. Let's see. What do you got on here for me today? John 3, 16. Praise God. That's a good reminder. Amen? <clears throat> you knew I needed some water. Thank you. The rainbow reminds us of God's perfect provisions for our lives. That the Lord truly cares for our needs. That he really does carry through to provide for the needs in our lives. But with this said... I want to ask you today, are you ready for some hard teaching? Because here it comes. Have you ever really thought about it? We fuss about rain like we did the other night. I pray it don't rain. But we need rain. We say that rain's going to mess up our hair, the clothes that we're wearing. Oh, I just got the car washed. Oh, we want to have this hayride. We don't want it to rain. And I'm still praying that it won't rain this afternoon after worship, so we'll be ready for that um, uh, trash pickup. But years of little rain, we fill it in the produce aisle of the grocery store, don't we? We see it in the decreased water table. We need rain in our lives. Just like the rain, we fuss about trouble in our lives, but in reality, we need trouble in our lives because, well, let's be honest, that's how we learn, is it not? How did we learn as a little baby not to touch the eye of the stove? Ah! That's how we learned. Let's be honest. We learned the hard way. We can't do it just because mom and daddy said don't do it. We have to go and try it out for ourselves and go, yep, you're right. That wasn't a very good idea at all, was it? We learn through trouble. We cannot, when we're honest, handle a trouble-free life because it is in the crucible of circumstances that we truly learn trust in God. It is in the midst of the storms of life that we develop the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit, storms of life, what could they do got to go going together there? I'm glad you asked. Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. We are gifted with love in the presence of hate. We are gifted with joy in the mire of despair. We are gifted with peace in the midst of hostility. We are gifted with patience under the fire of the overwhelming. We are gifted with kindness when confronted with negativity. We are gifted with goodness when faced with evil. We are gifted with faithfulness in response to our unfaithfulness, we are gifted with gentleness to cope with harshness. We are gifted with self-control when temptations call us by our first names. It is in the storms of life that we have the need to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit. And that's when they come when we are under fire. And we know it's going to happen when we see the rainbow and we're reminded of the one that we are to trust in. We are reminded of the one who is faithful and we are reminded of the Lord's provision for our lives. Even though we are undergoing struggles and trials, even then, our Lord does provide. Do you see the rainbow? Are you reminded to trust in God alone? That the Lord is indeed faithful and that he is the source of all true provision in our lives. As we are joyful in sighting the rainbow in the words of Genesis 9 and 13, let us rejoice in the one who has set his bow in the clouds and of his covenant and his care and his promises with 
and to us in our lives. Here in just a moment, our praise team are going to come forward to lead us in a time of invitation, and we're going to sing Our God Reigns. And, of course, that word reigns is God having control over our lives. We are under the lordship of Jesus Christ, R-E-I-G-N-S. But one of the comical um, thoughts of the English language is it sounds like another reigns, R-A-I-N-S. Our God reigns upon our lives as he reigns his trust in him, his faithfulness, and his provision in our lives as we live under his kingship, his lordship, and his reign. Let God reign down upon us today. Amen? He makes all the difference indeed. Let us stand as we come to sing. How is the Lord leading you today? Be faithful to our Lord and come and say yes to Him. possible to stay and we do have food setting up in the back I just saw Pam slip out to, to get that situated for us so I'm going to pray uh, a prayer of grace that we can go back and eat and then we can go out and go do some work 
and let us show our love to our community, the love that Christ Jesus has given to us that we want to share with them. Because when we see the rainbow, we know the one we can trust in. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen indeed. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this food that we're about to eat. We pray that you'll use it for the strength and nourishment of our bodies as we go out to serve our community and make a difference in your name. As we go forth from here this morning, all of us, as we go into our daily work lives, our daily school lives, the daily lives that you have placed us in, may we make a difference wherever you have planted us because you reign and you reign indeed. This is our prayer. And we pray this in your Son's name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God.